Hi, I am Luisa Winters and I'd like to take you through motion effects in Premiere Pro. This is the first of four videos that cover this topic. In this video, I will cover the different parameters in motion effects. If you're following along, you may do so with any clip you have in your project. Create a sequence and let's get started. Single click on your clip in the timeline to select it and go to the Effect Controls panel. In here, you will see the properties of the selected clip. They will be Motion, Opacity and Time Remapping for Video and Volume and Panner for Audio. In these videos, we will concentrate on motion effects. Let's expand the motion property and see what's in there. To expand, click on the Disclosure Triangle. We can now see that motion contains different parameters – position, scale, rotation, anchor point, and anti-flicker. The first thing we need to understand is that the anchor point is the point of origin for most of these motion effects. So, position, for example, means where the anchor point is in relationship to the viewable area of our video. Anchor point, on the other hand, refers to where the anchor point is in relationship to the clip. Both of these values are measured in pixel coordinates, where you have an X value, which measures left to right, and you also have a Y value, which measures up and down. In Adobe World, coordinates 0, 0 mean top left. So, if I position the anchor point at 0, 0, the point of origin will move to the top left of the clip. However, if I move the position of the clip to 0, 0, then the anchor point itself will move to the top left of the viewable area and, of course, it will take the clip with it. You can clearly see the representation of the anchor point with this icon, which by default is in the middle of the clip. Both position and anchor point are represented by pixel coordinates of X and Y. Let's move on to scale. Scale is measured in percentages, where 100% is the native scale of the clip. We can take the value of scale all the way down to 0% and all the way up to 600%. At this point, I'd like to go on a little side note and talk about mixing footages of different frame sizes. I have a clip that is 720 by 480. I will create a sequence for it. If you have a clip that is of a different frame size than your sequence, you can follow along. Now I have a sequence that is 720 by 480 and I will place my 1920 by 1080 clip in it. Obviously, this newly placed clip is bigger than the viewable area. If I right-click on the clip in the timeline, I can scale to frame size and you can see how immediately the clip gets smaller and it is now as big as the size of my sequence. However, if we look in the Effect Controls panel, we will see that the scale value says 100%. Premiere Pro rasterizes the clip at this value and if I change my mind and want to do some panning and scanning, I will lose quality. It is much better to choose Set from Frame Size, which will change the percentage of the clip so that it matches the viewable area, but it doesn't rasterize the clip. Let's undo the change we made before. Control or Command Z will do that. Now right click the clip again and this time choose Set to Frame Size. I can now do panning and scanning without losing quality. Just look at the value in the Effect Controls panel. If you need to change the width or the height of the clip to different values, uncheck this box here and now you can independently change the values of width and height. OK, let's continue with rotation. This will rotate using the anchor point as a pivot point and it's measured in degrees. 360 degrees are, of course, a full turn, so the value will be represented by two separate numbers, the first one indicating a full turn 
and the other part of a turn. So if I type 1025, then the value will read 2x305 degrees, which is two full turns plus 305 degrees. The next value is the anchor point, which we have already talked about, so let's move on to the anti flicker filter. We know that clips that contain thin lines or hard edges will flicker and even look jagged sometimes. This effect is used to add a little blur so that the undesired flickering is removed or diminished. However, this does add a blur, so the clip will look a little softer. Okay, so this takes us to the end of the different motion parameters. There is just one more thing I want to add. If we click on this icon to the left of the word motion, we will see control points on the clip in the program panel. And what that means is that we can now change these parameters for position, scale and rotation in a more visual way rather than in a numeric way, which is what we've been doing in the control panel. Let's try it. Deselect the clip by clicking somewhere in the gray space in the timeline. You see that there are no control points on the clip itself in the program panel. But if you double click this clip, you will see that the control points come back. You can click and drag the clip to change the different values of the parameters. All of the changes that we have made so far are considered global changes. What that means is that for as long as the clip plays, these are the values that the different properties will have. The next videos will cover keyframing. See you then.